I'm just going to take one day at a time. God gives us strength for the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many scriptures about that. Uh, and that, that's the wisdom of God. And that's the wisdom of my parents. When I ask them the bigger questions of my future, they're like, well, look, just take one day at a time. God's with you. And you're like, yeah, okay, but, but how's that going to work out, right? That's what we want. We're stressed. I want to know the plan. What's the plan? Yeah. And, and God's like, well, if I give you a plan, then what's, what's the point of having faith? You had mentioned it earlier just briefly, but you did attempt to take your life. And, and um, how old were you and, and what sort of led to that? And did you ever think when that happened that you would get out? Well, first of all, I never thought that I'd be married. And I feel like the fear of being alone uh, is one of the greatest fears I've ever experienced. And yeah, I think yeah. we have, though, a photo of my family. I do want to yeah, bring so up that photo so right now. You haven't mentioned that yet. You're married. You married. Two kids. Two boys and two girls. Uh, <laughs> identical twin girls. Thank you, you so much. You have a huge family. Big family. <laughs> lots of handfuls of yeah. trouble. But uh, great, great blessing from God. And I never awesome. thought, you know, that, that that would, you know, happen. And so when I was a kid, I thought I'm not going to get a job. And it's when your fears go from rational fears to irrational fears, yeah. meaning will I get a job to concluding fearfully, I'm never going to get a job. Yeah. I'm never going to be happy. Yeah. I'm yeah. always going to be alone. And so those are the... No one will ever marry me and I won't have children. I won't have a family. And, and I won't I'll ever die be alone. happy, right? And sure, yeah. Um, and so for me, I, yeah. I never thought I'd be independent and just a burden to, to my family. Um, and so I think really the bullying and the fear of being alone mm -hmm. uh, brought me to that attempt at suicide. Uh, and I went through... sort of reinforces that, right? Like you have no value you're not lovable, right. we don't want you. Right, when you don't know the truth of your value, you'll yeah. then believe the lies of your value that the world say about you. You need to yeah. look a certain way, be a certain way. Some guys, you know, they start saying the F word to be cool, thinking I need big biceps. My biceps yeah. were so big they fell off. Uh, <laughs> but I went through a depression uh, right. for, for around uh, four or five years, between ages eight and, and 12. And I never thought uh, that God would, would really do something beautiful with the broken pieces that I could see. Um, and I think the four things that, that I've done to get out of depression is, number one, uh, really be thankful for what I had. Um, I'm thankful for my little foot, thankful for my parents, thankful that I could go to school, thankful that I could know about God. Yeah. The second thing uh, is taking one day at a time. The mm -hmm. third thing was being able to talk to so my the, parents. So say that again. So yeah. thankful you have. The, the first one was thankful. The second one was taking it. Uh, what did taking you, one day at a time. You tell me a little bit about that too. Well, I mean, it, it's so easy to get so overwhelmed and even exaggerate your fear because of the unknowns. Yeah. Um, and, and, and to balance that out, you have to sort of just take a step back. And I can't think about six months from now, six years from now, and, the, and 10 years from now. I'm just going to take one day at a time. God gives us strength for the next day. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so many scriptures about that. Uh, and that, that's the wisdom of God, and that's the wisdom of my parents. When I ask them the bigger questions of my future, they're like, well, look, just take one day at a time. God's with you. And you're like, yeah, okay, but, but how's that going to work out, right? That's what we want. We're stressed. I want to know the plan. What's the plan? Yeah. And, yeah. and God's like, well, if I give you a plan, then what's, what's the point of having faith? Yeah. <laughs> so he keeps us there where I say, okay, God, I'm going to trust you with all my heart. So that's the second thing. That's great, Nick. Yeah. The third thing um, is to talk to somebody. You know, if Nick Vujicic never told somebody what was really going on, mm -hmm. uh, never counseled with anybody, never asked for help, I wouldn't be who I am today. Yeah. And, yeah. and I give all the glory to God uh, for everything and that he is my greatest counselor. But sometimes he gives you his children just to say, hey, how are you doing? Yeah. Yeah. I'm all right. No, really. How, How can you, I yeah. pray for you? Yes. You know, and, and that really starts helping us refocus and, and be reminded of God's promises that then instill more faith in us. Mm -hmm. The last thing to do is actually go try and ask God today, if you're depressed, believe it or not, I'm going to tell you something that, that will sound stupid, but to actually say, God, even though I haven't got what I feel like I need today or want today, help me to, to be used that I can give somebody else what they need, what, what they need, what they want, or even just help them. Like where, whether we go to a, a cancer ward in a hospital to make yeah. those kids smile, or go to an orphanage, or just go feed the homeless. Go try, be a miracle for someone else. That is a great medicine of the heart that my parents taught me as it's, well. It's such great wisdom too, because if you ha it, it helps you stop dwelling on your own issues and the things you don't have, and it helps you to not only see the hurts of others, but feel like I've got something to be generous with, my time, my compassion, whatever. It instills purpose. 
purpose. In fact, yeah. having having the 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 reconfirmation that you are not only a child of God and your value, mm -hmm. but you have a purpose. That no matter what the lies of the enemy are telling you, you know that God did use you to help that person, and that that's you know not arguable. Yeah. yeah. And so when you come back, no, I am a child of God. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. And it's mm -hmm. not to say that that we need necessarily a mission mm -hmm. or a ministry or a title to, yeah. to have the purpose of God. The greatest purpose of God that we have is to know Him, love Him, right. walk with Him, be with Him, That's talk right. to Him, and, and live as eternal beings with our eternal Father while we are still yet here. Um, our value is not determined on what we do. Our value is knowing who we are in Him That's and right. trusting in Him one day at a time. That's so good. That reminds me of something we say in our church every single week. We, we do this creed um, that was inspired by a guy named Henry Nouwen, uh, great authors, and, and we say, uh, I'm not what I do. I'm not what I have. I'm not what people say about me. I'm the beloved of God. Now, of course, what we do, we are what we do in some ways. We are what we have in some ways. If you have a million bucks, you're a millionaire. If you have nothing, you're broke. If, if you do good, you're in some ways a good person. If you do bad, you're, you know. But at the heart of it, the scriptures teaches that it all begins with grace, this idea that we're loved first despite what we do, what we have, what others say about us. And the reason I think that's so important is your story highlights what I think undergirds not only depression, but addiction, anxiety, and that is we need friends. We need family and we need the Lord. And the, the deepest human need is to connect deeply with God and with other people. And um, like for me, if I'm, if I'm connecting deeply with the Lord or with my wife or with my kids or my best friends, I don't have those, those nagging like, I don't want to wake up today, you know, like you would if you had depression or, or you know, urges to sin or to do, do evil or to harm others or like you said, start using an F word to try and fit in. It's so strange to me as a pastor as I've sat back to realize that so many of the mistakes we make that harm us is really coming from this place that says what you said. I don't want to be alone. I want to have value. I want to be. I want to have purpose in my life, and and that's what I think is so great about your story, is your family was able to show you. Look, God loves you, but God even has a calling for you. You're going to be married. You're going mm. to have children. Mm. You're going to have good, good lifelong friends. Mm. And don't you think? I mean, that's that's really uh, medicine for the soul, isn't it? It really is medicine for the soul, and and really it it disarms a, a church as mm -hmm. well, where we we even aspire. Uh, to, to the prosperity gospel, that no matter what you want, God's going to give it to you. And mm -hmm. that becomes your focus instead of the basics of what you just said. Yeah. And I've seen the prosperity gospel actually harm continents. Yeah. Continents. Sure. And I think that what it is, is we got to really see who we are and seeing what God really wants for us. And not saying money is bad, but our focus is saying, I love you, God. Help me to love my neighbor as myself. Those are yeah. two commandments. And that's it. Everything's summarized <laughs> under right. that. And so so easy to let the good and excellent things distract us from the most important yeah, things. Yeah, or like in John 15, Jesus, Jesus says, you will abide in me if you do what? Love one another. Mm. Like it's right there. Love me. And the way you love me is you love others. The way you love others is you love me. And Amen. It's just a great word. At TBN, our mission is to use every available means to reach as many individuals and families as possible with the life-changing gospel of Jesus Christ. Thank you for helping make the gospel of grace go around the world. Without you, we couldn't do it. God bless you.